Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and another festive puzzle today. Look at the snowman looking out at us from the grid by James Cop. Um, James has sent us a number of puzzles for special days in the past and this is a festive effort by him. Fantastic looking puzzle. I look forward to having a go at that. But this is a very special time in terms of um, Patreon. We have tomorrow we're going to be putting up videos for the Mexican standoff, our December reward, four videos on each of the puzzles, one of them by the constructor of the puzzle, Chile, and uh, the other three by ourselves. Those will be going up tomorrow so you can find out who won the duel and how you could have solved the puzzles. Um, that's for the $3 Patreons. Then in, I mean, we've got the puzzle pyramid still going on, this fantastic collection of puzzles by Peter Venus, Aspartagus and Panthera. Um, we've still got three days left to enter that competition, but it's tough and very well done to the people who have been entering it. I think Simon's been reading out the names and I add my congratulations to them. Now, the great news is we will be putting out videos on all the puzzles. We have been sent videos on almost all the puzzles by the constructors in that case. Thank you so much to those people. They have been very kind and we are just doing some of them ourselves, including um, one or two of the tougher ones, which is great. Um, so that is running until the end of the year, and then the solutions will go up in the new year. And also in the new year, we will be publishing our January reward. Remember, the Puzzle Pyramid was just a Christmas bonus for you for following us. Um, and our January reward is a fantastic puzzle hunt put together by Peter C. Hayward. I think Simon's been teasing what it's about and uh, it really is a quality piece of work. I mean, you'll love it. You're going to love it. So do join us on Patreon if you haven't already. It is really well worth it for uh, $2 for the puzzles, $3 per month for the solution videos as well. There's a lot of content and it's not just those that go up. So loads on Patreon as always. Um, there's also all our apps, they're great value for money too. Our merchandise, I am wearing, can you see the logo? That's my hoodie. There we go. I'm going to get it in the middle. There we go. And um, it keeps me very warm in the winter, which is great news. Now, here's a fellow who is not very warm, the snowman in this case. I think that's a smile though. So he's happy enough. And uh, Let's have a look at the rules of this brilliant looking puzzle. So normal Sudoku rules apply. Numbered arrows outside the grid indicate the sum of the digits along that diagonal path. So these seven digits add up to 53. They can indeed, I think those ones must include repeated digits. Um, the gray square is an even number. Adjacent digits along the lines, and that's all the lines in the puzzle. Well, I mean all the blue and gray lines in the puzzle. Um, alternate between odd and even numbers. Now that's not a rule we use very often, but those two have to have different parity. And I mean, any two connected lines, that line is going to have different parity for, or sorry, that cell is going to have different parity from all of those four, I presume. Um, cells separated by a black dot are in the ratio of one to two. Cells separated by a white dot are consecutive. Not all possible dots are given. This cell is a, an even number. And do give it a try on the link under the video. You can judge from the video length how hard it is, perhaps. Um, but I'm looking forward to this. I'm going to get started now. Let's get cracking. And, well, that 53 diagonal, that's quite a high number for seven cells. They're averaging over seven but that's probably not enough to get started. We need them to be averaging eight and a half or something before we can put something in. Now, 24, that looks a really good number. Uh, the minimum on this diagonal would be one, two, three, doubly repeated. So that would add up to 18. Six degrees of freedom. No, let's start with parity. Let's color all the lines. So that one we said, we'll make it green. I hope to in the end make them orange and blue for orange for odd and blue for even. But for now, let's just do the ones that are touching each other. Green, purple touches green, 
green touches purple. These two, remember, are not connected. They're the same parity because they're both connected to that one. Then we go down to here. We've got purple. We get green. These are purple, and that one's green. And I hope to figure out which of green is even and sorry, which of green and purple is even and which odd. We've got four of each in box two. We've got three of each in two of the columns. Okay, that's not enough. This one, of course, is even. So let's make that absolutely blue. Ah, yes, on the black crop key dot. Now, a run of three has to either be one, two, four, or two, four, eight. Now that, that does two things for us. First of all, it definitely uses two and four. And secondly, it means the middle digit has to be even. You could have a one on either end, but the middle digit can't be a one, can't be anything except two or four, in fact. So it is even. Now, two and four being in those mean this is six or eight because it's in the same box. Ah, bingo! And now we know that purple cannot be even, or we'd get five evens in the central column, which is impossible. One of our secrets is that there are only four even Sudoku numbers. So purple becomes blue, green becomes orange. Classic, ca <laughs> classic cracking the cryptic phrases. This is the last cell in its box. That has to be the fifth odd. Now, these two are going to be the same. Yes, that's the right question. They can't be even because we've got three evens down here. I think that's right. They're going to be odd, so they're orange. The ones touching them are even. These ones are odd. I've gone totally wrong. I've gone absolutely mad. I've gone out of my brain. I've done them entirely the wrong way around. Right. Let's go back. I said that the middle column, purple, couldn't be even. And then I coloured it blue because I'm an absolute muppet sometimes. So purple is orange. Green is blue. I apologise for my error. I have fixed it just like that. This is still orange, being the fifth one. Actually, I could have coloured that in orange even when these were green and purple. I didn't think of that. Um, We've got three evens. Now, these are not so obvious, actually. They could actually still be orange or blue. That's one of each. Got three each in these columns. Oh, OK, this isn't obvious how to proceed. Um, Ah, oh, yes, brilliant. Right. Given these alternate, like I can make these green and purple now, now that they, d they don't touch the other orange and blue. So I don't know which they are, although I'm going to find out in a moment. But they alternate and these two have to be the same. Now, at the moment, they could be blue because there are only two blues in box five. But we are going to get another blue in this run. It's either one, two, four or two, four, eight. We're going to get at least one more blue. So suddenly we know that purple now is orange this time, green is blue, and we've got lots more coloured. This is the last in its column. It's blue, actually. So these must have a one. They must be blue and orange. And this must be a one... Well, sorry, they're one each of blue and orange. Yes, I don't know which way round. But they're a one-four pair with two in the middle, and we are away. We've got a digit. James's puzzles are very nice like this. So one of those is blue. These two must be orange. Um, that still doesn't tell me about this domino. It's going to react to that domino. Oh, I was trying to take those pencil marks out. Um, now what? Look, we've got all these marked. We've got all of these parity marks. So they're even. And these are odd. Three odds and two evens gives you an odd total. It's not very helpful, but those two must have the same parity to make that work. It's not really very interesting, sorry. Um, oh, this is six or eight, because it's not two or four. So this is four. Ah, so these two... 
Right, they're, they're in a sequence connected by this. I think they've got to be 6 and 8 now. They have, with 7 in the middle. If you put 2 in one of them, it would need a 4 in the other one to, to make that sequence work. So, that's good. Now, these don't have to be in the same sequence. It doesn't have to run round like that. They just have to touch 6 or 8. So they're 5, 7 or 9. That means 3 is in one of those two cells. Um, 6, 8, 4. So one of these is a 2. 4, 7, 6, 8, 2. One of these two is a 7 in box 2. Okay, now what's happened on this 24 diagonal? This was actually... I keep looking at the 53 diagonal, but the 24 is by far the more promising one. See, I don't think we're going to have a 9 here. What is... the minimum of those is 6. The minimum of those is 6. That's 12. Now the minimum of these is 12, and that takes us to 24. So that's it. 1, 6, 5. They're all absolute givens. More than that, we can do 1, 2, 3 on the beginnings and endings of the diagonal. That must be the 2, because it's the odd number. We can colour those 1 and 3. We can now colour 1 and 4, because we've done them. That's going to give us blue and orange down here as well, as long as I'm not getting that in the wrong order, and I don't think I am. Right, so this is 8. 5 must connect through 6, so this is 8. That's, well, it's not 5. It could be 7 again. Um, we've got 3, 7, and 9 still to go in the middle section. 8, 7, 6, 4, 2... Yeah, we've kind of used up all our consecutive cells, so we can't really do that again anywhere else. Although I will continually be tempted to, I imagine. Um, but we can't use that again. This is either 4 or 8. Oh, what's happening to this diagonal now? It's getting numbers on it is what's happening. Right, let's imagine the maximum. 9 and 9 is 18, 8 is 26, 5 is 31, 7 is 38, 9 is 47, 8 is 55. So at the maximum, there's only 2 degrees of freedom from 53. So that is not a 4. That would use 4 degrees of freedom, which don't exist. This can't be anything other than a 9, because the next one down is 5, and that's 4 degrees of freedom. So everywhere else we have two degrees of freedom. These have to be the same parity I worked out. So they can't both be eights now. So that, oh, well, you know, they could both be nines if that's a six. That's all right, yeah. Okay, so this is a two eight pair. This is a four six pair. This has become a seven. Now we've got a three nine pair. This, oh no, we haven't. We've got a 3 there and a 9 there, thanks to Mr. 9 at the bottom of the grid. We get a 5 and a 7. This is a 1-3 pair. We can put 5 in here. Got all sorts of 1-3 pairs. That's giving us a um, an X-wing of sorts. That uses up the 1s and 3s in rows 8 and 9. So we must have a 1-3 pair here in row 7. This is the last even in its row. That's a 5-9 pair there. Odd, did you know that? This is 4 or 6, of course you did. Oh, look, this sees 4, 6 and 8, and it's even. So that's a 2. That didn't fix this. Um, right, This one of these at least is a 9. Is that helpful? No. That's 1, 3, 9. One of them at least is a 9. Actually, what that does tell me, and I never quite see this, is that all of these cells and all of these cells can't be 9s. Because if at least one of those is a 9, they see all of them. I don't know how to use it, but it is a fact nonetheless. Um, what have we got down here? We've used up a couple of pairs. So 4 is in one of those two cells. 2, 5, 9, 1, 3, 4. These are from 6, 7, or 8. 2 is in one of those two. 5 is in one of those three. Um, right.
right, let's have a look at this 41. I haven't really looked at that. It's a much more averagey number and a bit less appealing as a result. In fact, it's slightly lower than an average for seven. No, it's not. It's higher than an average for seven digits. Oh, that's a pity. But these are quite low. OK, let's look at the maximum. Six and three is nine. Plus 7 is 16, plus 7 is 23, plus 2 is 25. Ah, the minimum total for these two is 16. So they are from 7, 8, 9. It could be a double 8 pair, or it's a 7, 9 pair. No, it could be, it could be more. It could be 17 or 18. Oh, no, hang on. We've got the same parity thing. They're odd in total. They're still odd after you add a couple of evens. So these have the same parity just like those do. In fact, those are both odd. Um, these might be odd. It wouldn't ruin the rows. Or they might be even. Only one odd to go down here. Hmm. Don't know what to do with that. One of those is four. We've got eight and two. OK, well, these I've used to some extent, at least, three of the diagonals. This one looks a lot less appealing in the 44 is virtually an average of five for the whole thing. And it remains pretty unappealing, frankly, after those. So I don't think that's where we go next. Let's have a look at the fact that we've used up one, two, three in this box. It's useful down here already, but maybe we can use it up here. That is left to be 6, 8, or 9. This 4, 6, 8, or 9. That doesn't really do anything. Um, that I don't know anything about. This can't be 7 or 5. That one. Oh, come on. There must be something going on here. Not much, actually. OK, so if that was odd, that would be odd. Then all of these would be even. What does that mean? Doesn't mean much to me, I have to say. Two, two. One of these is a two. That's not an eight. So eight's in one of those two cells. It doesn't look helpful. I'm going to pencil mark it nonetheless because I have found it out. Um, what about these then? The degrees of freedom on here were just two, weren't they? 18, 20, 27, 34, 37, 43. Yeah, oh, of course. Does that mix with these? This has two degrees of freedom too. No, I mean, I think just knowing that they... They could both be seven, nine pairs. There's no reason why they couldn't be. And this could still be eight, eight. And in fact, one of them could be a 9-9 nine, nine pair and the other one a 7-7 seven, seven pair. So it's not... Well, this one can't be a 7-7 seven, seven pair. Actually, neither of them can be a 7-7 seven, seven pair. I've just remembered because they both only have two degrees of freedom. That would take four degrees off them. So they're either two 9-7 pairs or that's a double eight. I don't know what this means. Um... For the solve, I don't know what to do. One, three, four, two, five. So these are from six, seven, eight, and nine. Does that have any impact on these? Can't see how. Okay, the fact that these can't be nines, then, does that do anything? 
doesn't really seem to at the moment. Hmm, okay, this is a classic James Cott manoeuvre. You get a decent start into the puzzle with some clever stuff, then you get totally stuck. Um, <laughs> that's really where I am at the moment. Let me, let me keep thinking about this. There must be something I'm missing about some pair. One, two, four. This can be any of three, five, seven, and nine. So can that. Wow, I don't know what I'm meant to be thinking at this point. Just going to have to find some bits for Sudoku. I suppose 8, 8, there must be an 8 in one of those two cells, but it could be there with a 7, 9 pair, or a 9, 9 pair, or it could be there with an 8. Then one of those has to be 8. That's hardly interesting. Um, one of them would stop that being an 8, but not the other one. Is it this diagonal? 10, 17, 21. We need another 23. How am I using that? I don't know. Um, nine. It's a sort of... Oh, they can't both... Have I established that before? They can't both be 9, or it wouldn't leave room for a 9 here. So, one of them's 9, one of them's 7, and this must be 8. Let me just do the maths one more time. 16, 21, 28, 37, and those are 16. Yes, that is right. Right, so we get an 8 there. So that fixes 8 in this box. That means eight's not in those cells. This can't be eight. Um, right, what does that do? Doesn't seem to have opened up the world of excitement that I was hoping. This is six or, no, four, six or seven. Of course, one of these is a four. Maybe they are two even digits. That's a one three pair, nine, four, one, three, eight. These are from two, five, six, and seven. Oh, I don't know. One of those is a nine. Is that relevant? No, because I don't know. Well, that's not a pair of nines now. Maybe that's relevant. Yes, it's the same deal as over there. Now this can't be. One nine has to be there. That can't be a pair of nines. And therefore, these two cells, which have to have the same parity, add up to 16. 18, 25, 32. These add up to 9. They must be 3 and 6. Okay, that is, that is really nice S sort of setting of the puzzle. And now we've got digits in here, which I wasn't expecting. That can go orange. They can go blue. We've got all the blues in the bottom row. So we don't have to sing the blues anymore there. Um, two, five, six, triple. I can't color that. Right, now I've got a big number here. What does that mean? Ah. Oh. No. That can't be 8. That's not that interesting. 8, 1, 2, 4. This can still be 3, 5, 7, or 9, which is irritating. 6 can be in any of those positions. That is not an exciting column. 4 has to be in one of those two. And therefore one of those two. And that can't be 6. That sees 2, 4, 6, and 8. So it is odd. And it's not three or nine. Yep, 
Yes, I was going to keep looking at this diagonal. I don't think it's get it, getting me anything, but 21. Let's go with the minimum, 28, 30. So the maximum for these three is 14. How can I use that? Ah, here's a thought. 8 is in one of those two cells. If it's in that cell, that's also an 8. So 8 is now in one of these two cells, and that's not 8. That's clever and useful. Maybe useful. Yes, it is useful, because now 8 is not in any of those cells. We know it's not in one of those two because of these. So 8 in row 2 has been placed, and it's on the blinking diagonal. Oh, that is gorgeous. Right, now we're in business, I think. 10, 17, 21, 29. So these other four cells add up to 15. How could that be a 9? Could be a 9, actually. Bother. Because then these would add up to 6, which is a 2 here and a 1-3 pair here. Can that be a 5? If not, I'm going to know the parity of that. 5, uh, 9, 16, 26, 34, and 10 more. 7 there and a 1-2 pair. Blast! Oh, I thought I was on to something. Now what? got four odds in this box. That could be odd. One of those is even, one is odd. Oh, come on. What's going on here? What can this be, actually? Does that have any interest? It can't be 5, 7, 8. It can't be 4, which is in one of those two cells. It actually can't be 9, because that's a sort of X-wing of 9s, preventing 9 being in any of those cells. So that includes that. So it is either 6 or 1, 2, or 3. It's not that useful. One, four, five, seven. Oh, gosh. It's got to be this diagonal. Oh, maybe, maybe it's resolving that first. Now, if that was an eight, we'd have a seven, eight, nine triple. And a seven, eight, nine triple there. Maybe this can't be a 6. I'm, I'm going to eliminate that if I can. 6, 10, 17, 27, 35. Yeah, we're only making 44. So if that was a minimum 7, you'd need two ones there. So that's not a 6. So actually, there aren't that many ways to do this now. I keep on adding this, I'm sorry. 17, 21, 29 in the known numbers. Now, using these, 38, 44, we can't use the two big ones. In fact, if that's a 9, that's a 2, and that's a 1, 3 pair. If that's a 7... Then these add up to 8. I suppose that could be a 5, a 1, and a 2. Or a 2... And then this would be a 1 and a... Well, a 1 and 5 pair, because it couldn't be a pair of evens. So these are either a 1-5 pair... 
I'm sorry, I keep on having to... It's 29 in the ones that I've got big numbers for. So if that's a 9, 38, that has to be a 2, then these have to add up to 5, which would be a 2 and a 3. They couldn't use a 4. If that's not a 9, it's a 7. We're up to 36. We need 8 more, which has to be 2, 5, 1, doesn't it? No, hang on. If that's a 5, then it's 2 and 1, that way round. If that's a 2, these add up to 6, and they're a 1, 5 pair, which is certainly possible. But it doesn't leave many possibilities. Um, right, come on, what else have we got going on here? These odds, are they don't have a one, two, three triple unless that becomes a two. Again, we have this issue. No, we don't have this issue of these not being nines because we don't know that there's a nine. This is either a double eight pair or a nine seven pair. If it's a nine seven pair with nine seven there, then this one of them has to go in one of these cells. What do I think of that? I think it's possible. If it if it's a seven nine pair, then those are the same, and one of them appears up there. <laughs> I don't know what I think of that either. I think it's possible. Irritatingly, two. There's a two here and a four here. What about this? This can't be one two four. It can't be seven or nine or eight. That is three, five, or six. Six, in fact, in this row is in one of those two positions. If that's a six, that's a six, then that's a nine. We get a one, three pair. Those two would be five and seven. And if that's a six, I don't know if that it means anything particularly. Ah, oh, if that's a six, then these are eights. What does that do? I don't think it does anything. It's so irritating. Oh, come on. This can't be one or seven, so it's three, five or nine. Then this, five, seven, eight, two, six, one, three, four, nine. Is there something going on in this row? Yes, no. I thought I was going to place a two and I'm not. Oh, think, man. What is happening? Got three evens and an odd to put in these cells. If that was the odd, that would be very constraining. You get evens in all of these cells. They'd actually go six, four, two here. Then that would be odd, and that makes this even, doesn't it? One, two, three, four odds, yes. In fact, if that's a two, that's a five. If that's a two, then we don't know. Then all of these possible, well, no, then that's odd, actually. So only one of these is a two. Uh, they both see that cell. That's totally uninteresting. Hmm. If that's a two, that's a two, that's a two, that's a two, that's a two. Hmm. 
No, come on, what's going on here? One, two, three. Maybe I haven't used that enough. Four, eight. So that is five, six, seven, or nine. These, they're not seeing. Oh, hang on. Eight can't be there. Can eight be here or here? If that was eight, that would have to be eight. I cannot see. We don't know that that's a 9-7 pair. If it was, I could rule 9 out of there and make it an even cell. How about those two having to have different parities? What is that doing for me? I mean, answer came there, none. Okay, if that's a 5, that puts a 5 here. I hadn't seen that before. That puts a five in one of these positions, one of those positions. Obviously we've got those givens. Um, it doesn't really do a lot else. I've just got that bit of the diagonal to go. And that bit of that, no, no, and of course this. Oh, maybe we can rule this out from being a big number somehow. If that's a five, this is a two. Then you get seven and two. Right, that's not possible. Because you'd have, if that's a five, you need twos in both those positions, and then there's nowhere to put a two in box one. So that's not a five, that is one or three, which is a pair, and it gets us a nine. Hoo-wee, that gets us a seven. On the diagonal, that gets us a nine. Come on, here we go. Um, that nine means that's not a nine, and this isn't a nine, hurrah. Nine and nine there. So these now are a pair of eights to make the um, 41 diagonal work, and we can color them. And we must be off to the races again now. That's not a nine. That's not a nine. That, indeed, five and nine have been solved. That's not a five, either. That's a one, three pair, so that's a five. This is three or seven. This isn't five. Come on, keep going. One, three pair, five, eight, two, seven, six. So we've got four, nine at the top as a pair that I can't color. Um, these eights, what did they do? Absolutely nothing. Well, that's not an eight, it's three, six, or seven. That, that's what these eights did. They turned that into a two, eight up there. That two. These are, oh, that is a naked single six, which is very pleasant. In fact, that fixes the rest of the row. That nine can come out of those cells. We've got a five here. Yes, that puts, I don't know what color that is, um, two on the diagonal. Now, let's just, well, no, let's just do the parity. We've got one, to three odds, we need a fourth odd, that's not a two. Okay, now I'm probably gonna to have to add it up again, yet again. Um, 10, 17, 21, 23, 31. So our last three cells sum to 14, which is either nine, three, one. Do I know that can't be a three? Not sure how I determined that can't be a three. I'm not prepared to risk it at this point. I'm putting three back in. Nine, one, three, or seven, one, five. So one of those has to be a one now. That's right. That is right. 
Let me check that again. I don't trust myself on this diagonal. 10, 20, 27, 31. No, 13 more. Seven, yes, that's what I was doing. 7 and 1, 5, or 9 and 1, 3. One of them is a 1. That's not a 1. It's not a 6 either. It's 2 or 3. That's a 1, 2, 3 triple. Actually, I could have got that from that being a 4, 6, 9 triple. Um, 4, 9, 8, 6, 7. So this is also not 5. Aha! So 5 in the box is there. And that is going to finish this, isn't it? No, it's actually not. Oh, 10, 20, 27, 31, 36. These add up to eight. Yes, that does finish it. One and seven. Lovely. Uh, sorry, the bottom ones are seven. There we go. So that diagonals, all the diagonals are finished. All the little killer clues are finished. Are we actually mopping up? It doesn't feel like it. I mean, you might mop up after a um, finished snowman, but I don't think we are yet. We've got a 1-3 pair in that row. That makes a 2. This is a 3. That fixes 1 and 3. That fixes 7 there. This is a 3. This must be right in 2. Uh, that's a 6, I think, and we've got 1 and 4, which are a pair I can't fill in there. 3, 7 pair over this side. That can't be a 3. Oh, come on. This must still work. Um, oh, yes, this 3, 1 pair. Actually, now we've finished the diagonals completely. We hadn't before. That's a 6. That is four or seven, and this is seven or nine. I can't see a triple there. There probably is one. Oh, three and one are done down here. One, five, eight, three, two, nine. That is a naked single. Four, six. We're going to finish the column. I think we're then going to finish the puzzle. Two, four, eight, six, and five. This has been a very clever puzzle and a very enjoyable snowman experience. I don't know who's got snow at the moment. Probably uh, Scandinavia, the centre of Europe and the northern USA and all of Canada, I dare say, are enjoying the snow or not. And uh, we don't have any and haven't had any serious snow this year, but we have finished a snowman puzzle. Let me just finish off the colouring of odds and evens to complete that because people do like to see that done. And there we go. Um, right. That's a nice puzzle. That wasn't easy at all. It, start, it started deceptively, and then it got harder, and that's classic James Cott. Thank you for following along with me. Um, that has been good fun. I hope you had a go at the puzzle, and hope to see you again soon tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.